Okay, this is a product review of a program, an app called Two Screens. It's a application that allows you to divert your video signal to an external projector. So this is the first of many segments that I plan on this video. The program again, the app is called Two Screens. So I'm going to stop for here and show what the projector is all about. Okay, the uh, projector I'll be using for the video is called a cinnamon. It's very small in size. As you can see it fits in the palm of my hand. Very portable, lightweight, maybe a pound and a half, two pounds at the most. Two cords to it. There is no electrical cord. If you need to charge it, you have to plug it into a USB of a computer. Uh, I don't know what the full battery length is. I have not used it to its fullest extent. When in doubt, I just plug this into the computer just as a backup power support ply. Uh, the other cord that plugs into the iPad is just a basic connector, connects into the bottom of the uh, computer, uh, the iPad. And then the battery to this unit is a square unit. It's not much to it, but it is uh, unique to the uh, projector. It's a full river type battery, square, so something that uh, if you're playing long uh, presentations, you may want to purchase a backup battery or something like that. I have not had that need. It's just a matter of plugging into the USB and let it be charged that way. So the next part of my video will be after I hook up and then I will be going into the two screen app and show how that works. This is a product review of a program uh, app program on the iPad called two screens. It also works on the iPhone. It also has a complement program that you can use the iPhone as a remote control to control the iPad for two screens when doing PowerPoint. I don't have the iPhone companion, so it, it all be done and operated from the iPad. I have the uh, video, handheld video camera here. It turned out I'm going to be using the handheld to bear with the camera work. I'm um, focused in on the iPad. I have projected on the wall the same image that's being displayed on the iPad. So I'm going to go over some features of this program and hopefully I can do this in one cut without doing some crazy editing and stuff like that. And again, bear with the camera work. I tried a two camera approach, it just wasn't going to work uh, too fluidly and trying to save myself the editing as well. So at any rate, uh, getting to this program. I'm going back to the iPad. It has a lot of menu options. There is a learning curve to the program, but it didn't take too long. It took me about a half hour to get somewhat comfortable using this program. Uh, but this is a program I do use uh, for presentations uh, using PowerPoint. I don't have the actual PowerPoints. I'm using the sample uh, that came with uh, this program. They have a menu going across the top. And you don't see the menu being dropped down as you do here on the wall. On the wall, it still shows the full screen. So you can do a lot of back-end work on the iPad, and your audience you're presenting to will never know it because it won't be displayed. The only thing that will be displayed is actually the picture behind it. So if I open up a sample PowerPoint, it gives a nice little pretty tree. And then you see on the left side, looking at the iPad here, I've got a preview of my second, third, fourth, and fifth slides that on the wall is not being displayed. So if I go to slide two, as you can see on the wall, it's already switched over. Slide three, but yet it's not showing the preview that is on the iPad that now I am showing on the iPad of the slide. So that's a nice little feature that uh, folks watching the presentation are not going to see. On the bottom, it has the navigation uh, arrows. You hit the down arrow, it takes you to the next slide. And again, on the wall, it doesn't show his navigation. And I'm hitting the down arrow to switch, change slides. If I need to back up slide, there is an up arrow on the iPad that allows for that. The nice thing about this program is that it does allow for switching. I can go right from a PowerPoint over to a website at a, literally a touch 
of my bookmark. So if I go to FlowAware, I've left my PowerPoint, and now I'm loading up FlightAware. So I'm able to switch from the web to the PowerPoint and go right back to the PowerPoint at, at literally a touch of a, a button or an icon or whatever you wish to call it. Nice thing about this program, it does allow for annotations where I can actually make annotations on the website and uh, on the iPad. All I do is I just hit this little pencil, pen, and now I'm in annotation mode. Going back to the wall, I can uh, use the, the circles, I can circle an area. I'm trying to highlight certain areas to be completed. If I wanted to make an arrow on the iPad, of course it may not show up too well using it. If I touch the arrow, and I'll go back to this wall, wall, and then I can point to various fields. And of course I can change the color palette to different colors that you know might be pleasing to the eye by just clicking the color palette and just drawing arrows. So that's basically a real nice feature and then if I wanted to stop the annotations I do that on the iPad. Of course you're not seeing it on the wall. And I can quickly again just flip over to the PowerPoint by hitting the tab button and I go back to that sample PowerPoint and sure enough I'm back on the PowerPoint. And I'm again able to use that annotation feature by on the iPad. I just hit the annotation arrow that I showed before and it remembers of course what I did last so of course it takes a little planning ahead which I haven't done on this. I just said undo everything. It just happened to look nice and just do my annotations again by either drawing lines, pointing arrows, or I can even draw shape around a object. So that's a nice feature again about the program is that I'm able to quickly go from uh, various functions whether it be a website or a web page so, or even the PowerPoint. So I just have to stop the annotation and go back to my PowerPoint and again the multi-tab is nice and go back to FlightAware and there I am back to FlightAware so it's a good training aid for demonstrations on the iPad uh, very flexible a little learning curve again what you see on my iPad is quite a bit different than the what's displayed on the wall and that's how I quickly got to various websites so if I wanted to again go over to my favorites go to CNN and what's displayed on the wall is only going to be the CNN website and that annotation feature is a powerful utility in trying to point out various things uh, about something that you want to point out in your presentation so hopefully it's not find this useful and that's pretty much how you can actually display, use the iPad in a productivity sense. So, take care. You can watch videos, I will say, on the big wall rather than just the confines of a uh, iPad. You can, uh, the projector can, it has a flexible type feature where you can broadcast it on the ceiling if you wanted to or on the wall. Of course, I've got it on the wall to watch a video and it does come out with sound you go into the video part of your iPad and you pick any movie you want I have a bunch of movies but I just have one loaded up for brevity sake of this video you hit that you'll get this TV connected doesn't display on the iPad but yet on the wall it's displaying the movie itself and of course the sound is coming out of the projector. So that's again a fun feature of uh, using this projector is that I can download a movie to my iPad and just watch it on the big screen. Of course it is daylight so it's not the brightest and probably camera contrast issues but this is the last segment of the video. Hope somebody finds this useful. Take care.